This is about the first part of prepping your equipment to do some gear milling. Let's do it. For gear milling, you can use almost any mill and dividing head. Up above is our old Ellis dividing head on a bridge port. We got rid of that, and now we're going to fit it and use it as an accessory on a more jig bore. So here's our trek down the road of uh, making this equipment work for us. First part here of just equipment preparation. We picked this uh, machine out because it was close and very budgetary. It uh, All the controls work, all the knobs and dials and lead screws run smoothly, motor ran great. We already had our Ellis dividing head. And so we're just putting this system together and augmenting a mill. You might want to use a bridge port or any other commonly found mill, Acra, etc., to to get this done. So let's just look at this uh, jig bore. Now it's not the ideal machine to do this particular operation and it's not a new machine either but uh, like I said it's budgetary the machine has a small relatively small table and it has lead screws with a really fine pitch to them so you're gonna have to do a lot of cranking might be the only downfall of this particular setup yours may vary but basically we have several other uses for this mill and combination with another tool or rotary table but since we thought we'd do some gear school work gears for makers and just be able to show everybody how to make a gear with the dividing head we also wanted to just go through this equipment now here's the ls dividing head itself we featured it previously and it has uh, plates for making different segments in a circle and it also has direct indexing as a 12 hole plate it, it's very flexible. It's got a three-jaw chuck on it. And here's the final mock-up here of what our rotary table and the Ellis dividing head are going to look like on the machine. The hauser is, it's a rotary table mounted on another uh, rotary surface so you can tilt it. This is in the horizontal position, the plate's facing horizontal. There it is, vertical, coming back down to horizontal. Very nice uh, piece of Swiss gear that uh, we'll use to for other things. But for the most part, we're focusing on using the Ellis dividing head here. In, in this photo, we see the arbor now that has the gear cutting tool. Ellis dividing head on the right, hauser on the left. But let's get to work and, and look at what uh, we started with here in this old tool. Now, Moore is known for their old original tools were very sought after precision instruments and the guys had a lot of very early thoughts on precision and documented in several of their books so we're just cleaning up this old device it, it looks old but it has some very neat capabilities from precision standpoint and it, it just really feels good to operate it as an operator I'm cleaning up the table here and you know as, as we get new equipment we just like to clean it up and make sure all the surfaces are straight and clean that we can augment the table make sure every everything is just well maintained and, and can function properly we're taking care of the table surface here and getting it all clean you can see the oiler in the front right that oils the ways that black knob sticking out on your left is to lock the X and Y axis, just one on both sides, one for X and one for Y. The jig bore doesn't have a tilting head, so by definition it doesn't have, you know, it may have an error in the uh, Z axis going up and down, but it is built to be highly precisely vertical, and the machine is all about precision in how it operates and what it can do for you. So we're just cleaning the table again here, and when you use these stones, they're really meant to 
not take off any of the surface of the table, but to clear off the high spots. There's one kind of bright freckle right there in the middle, and there's a, a number of them throughout the table that this stone gets off. Make sure it's flat. That's all it's about. Common, common shop practice to get all your surfaces flat before you made them up to something else, and, and especially if you're wanting them to lay flat. In order to get this more to work for us, it's got three inch centers on its T-slots. The dividing head has a really big, needs half inch 13 bolts, more standard size bolts, and the Hauser has a different bolt pattern than this, and we have a fixture plate. We use it in our Haas. It's got 125 millimeter T-slot centers. Kind of as a joke there, I said the Moore has three inch centers with lots of decimal places indicating the precision. So this plate that we use uh, in our Haas, we just mounted it up and trammed it, and we're just going to put the bolt pattern for the Moore into it, countersink some holes so we can basically give the table a lift kit and a modification with this fixture plate. The fixture plate will allow us to mount the dividing head on the, on the base. Now, depending on what, what mill you're using, you may not need to go to this extreme, but fixture plates are awesome for mounting various accessories here, and, and we also needed to do this to mount the uh, Hauser rotary table. Now, I didn't say it, but the, the Hauser and the Ellis will rarely be on there at the same time, if ever, other than for some photos in this video, but usually one or the other is going to be mounted on the table. Right here we're taking care of some of the burrs on the backside after we uh, got it out of the mill and, and everything got tapped with the machine. And we're just cleaning this up, doing pretty standard stuff to get the back of this aluminum fixture plate flat and all cleaned up. The precision stones that you've seen us use so far and that we're getting ready to use again are diamond ground to be very, very flat and this particular pair is, uh, I believe it came from Lance Balti. And he does a nice job at these. And, and so I think I have a couple sets, but this is the one I use the most. And it does a great job of uh, taking these high spots out. Now I've already gone through, felt it by hand, taking the big burrs off. all Everything I can feel by hand. So we're just getting some little tiny nicks out of this thing so it'll lay flat really common practice we're not getting this uber flat or making a flat plate i probably could have cleaned it up with in the mill itself but uh this is just taking care of the right stuff to put it on the mill now more is the the jig bore is is really a c-frame machine and it has a decent z travel the the tooling for it is a little unusual, and over time we had collected some, not on purpose, but with other eBay and auction purchases, we'd found rounded up some uh, some of this tooling. The only thing we bought recently was the Albrecht chuck right there in the middle that's mounted to one of those tool holders. This is very typical type of stuff that comes with the more jig bore. And there's our Ellis dividing head mocked up. With the Albrecht and we're kind of checking it out making our first run of the machine back over at our shop looks pretty good there's a little arbor gear gear milling arbor sitting in the uh, chuck but I didn't really like the setup because when I use those stops on the back of the machine you see me bolting on right there you know it makes the uh, it makes the plate stick out on the front now there's really no issue with that and everything fits just fine but uh, I, I thought I'd put it back in the machine and, and make some slots so that it will register on the table evenly distribute itself over the table and you know it's it's trammed essentially already by virtue of being up against those stops on the back so here we go one more time in the mill it's and uh, it, it registers it goes right on there T slots line up life's good so future life will make that easy not sure how much we're gonna be changing this fixture plate out and of course the Hauser bolts they're not symmetric and they don't match either bolt pattern 
But this is a, a worthy rotary table. It is Swiss. Came through New York. Machine tool dealer. It's nicely, nicely put together. And there's always some off angle hole or something we need to drill. So this has uh, been quite useful for us in the past on our old bridge port. So we're, we're glad to get it back out and uh, put back on a, another capable machine tool. We've never used collets in it, but I think it takes some, some sort of Shoblin collets in the middle with a little collet holder. If, uh, if anybody knows about that, let me know. It'd be interesting to have a setup to go with it. Nice little table. It's going to live on the left side. That way when you rotate the table around to its vertical position, you got the table side, table on the right side, some space on the right, and all the controls at the front. Real simple setup here. Here shows, here's, you know, everything mounted up real nice. The tool adapters that we had from Moore had a kind of an odd thread size, 7 8 18. So we made a, a gear milling arbor here in kind of the longer one in the middle with the threads and the, and the and now it's mounted in the arbor of the moor itself. Here it is with the hauser. And here we go back with our Ellis dividing head. And here's everything. Kind of the finale of all of the equipment coming together on the table. Moore has a few really neat publications. They've been shown on the internet before, but I, I'd really like to, I'll, I'll leave a link below. I think you can still buy these. I, I found these at an auction and was fortunate to get them, but I believe that's Mr. Moore on the left there and some of his jig borers and early accomplishments which were, you know, amazing in the field of metrology. Moore was a hopper too. There's a large, the large worm gear part of their rotary table is shown on the lower left there being hobbed by that large hob bit. So precision and gearing all goes together. Please follow along as we finish this series milling gears and show you the rest of this setup and how it works. Also, don't forget to look below in the description for a lot of links to more information and back to our website. And thank you very much for watching.